Imagine waking up one day to find out that the entire world as we know it is about to end. Not because of a natural disaster or an alien invasion, but because of something much more subtle and ancient, the way we grow our food. Sounds crazy, right? But believe it or not, the way our ancestors figured out how to farm and domesticate animals has shaped the course of human history in ways that are still affecting us today. Let's dive into this wild journey and see how something as simple as planting a seed or raising a cow has determined who rules the world and who gets conquered. For thousands of years, humans lived as hunter-gatherers. They moved from place to place, following the animals they hunted and the plants they gathered. This lifestyle worked pretty well, but it had some major limitations. Hunter-gatherers could only support small groups of people because there wasn't enough food in one area to feed a large population. They had to keep moving to find new sources of food, which meant they couldn't build permanent homes or large communities. Then, about 10,000 years ago, something amazing happened. Some groups of humans figured out how to grow their own food and domesticate animals. This might sound simple, but it was a game changer. Instead of constantly moving, people could settle down in one place and grow crops and raise animals. This meant they could produce a lot more food on the same amount of land. For example, if you have an acre of land, you can grow a lot more edible calories by planting crops and raising animals than by hunting and gathering. This is because most of the plants and animals in the wild are not edible to humans. They might be poisonous, indigestible, or just not worth the effort to gather. When people started farming, they could support much larger populations. This gave them a huge advantage over hunter-gatherer groups. Imagine two groups of people, one group of farmers and one group of hunter-gatherers. Farmers can produce enough food to feed 10 to 100 times more people on the same amount of land. This means they have more people, and more people means more power. More people can defend their land, go to war, and build bigger and better things. Domestic animals were another big advantage for farmers. These animals provided food in several ways. First, they provided meat, which was a major source of protein. Today, most of the meat we eat comes from domestic animals like cows, pigs, sheep, and chickens. Wild game is still around, but it's more of a delicacy. Second, some domestic animals provided milk and milk products like butter, cheese, and yogurt. These animals, like cows, sheep, goats, and camels, could produce much more food over their lifetimes than if they were just slaughtered for meat. For example, a cow can produce milk for several years, which means it can feed many more people than if it was just killed for its meat. Third, domestic animals provided fertilizer. Farmers knew that manure animal poop was a great way to make plants grow better. Even today, in many parts of the world, animal manure is still the main source of fertilizer. It's a lot cheaper and more effective than synthetic fertilizers. Fourth, some domestic animals, like oxen and horses, were used to pull plows. This made it possible to farm on land that was too tough for people to till by hand. For example, the first farmers in Europe could only farm on light soil using handheld digging sticks. But when they started using oxen to pull plows, they could farm on much heavier and tougher soil. This allowed them to grow more food and support more people. Another big change that came with farming was the sedentary lifestyle. Hunter-gatherers were always on the move, but farmers had to stay in one place to tend their crops and animals. This led to several important changes. First, staying in one place made it easier to have more children. Hunter-gatherer mothers had to carry their children when they moved, so they could only have one child at a time. They usually had children every four years. But farmers who didn't have to move could have children every two years. This meant they could have more children and support larger families. Second, a sedentary lifestyle made it possible to store food. Hunter-gatherers couldn't store food because they had to keep moving. But farmers could store food in granaries and other storage places. This was important because it allowed them to have food reserves for times when crops failed or when they needed to feed non-food producing specialists. One of the most important changes that came with farming was the rise of specialized roles. In hunter-gatherer societies, 
everyone had to contribute to finding food. But in farming societies, some people could focus on other things. For example, some people became full-time farmers, while others became craftsmen, priests, or soldiers. This specialization allowed societies to become more complex and advanced. Farming also had some negative consequences. One of the biggest was the spread of diseases. When people started living in larger, more crowded communities, diseases could spread more easily. Many of the diseases that we know today, like smallpox and measles, evolved in farming communities. These diseases were often deadly, but they also made farming societies stronger in the long run. When farming societies came into contact with hunter-gatherer societies, the diseases they carried often wiped out the hunter-gatherers, who had no immunity to these diseases. The advantages of farming and domestic animals had a huge impact on the history of the world. Societies that figured out how to farm and domesticate animals first had a big head start. They could produce more food, support larger populations, and develop more advanced technologies. This made them more powerful and allowed them to conquer other societies. For example, the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Indus Valley all developed around farming. These civilizations were able to build large cities, develop writing systems, and create complex social structures. They also had powerful armies and were able to conquer neighboring regions. In the Americas, the Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans developed advanced civilizations based on farming. They built large cities, developed writing systems, and had powerful armies. But when the Spanish conquistadors arrived in the 16th century, the diseases they brought, like smallpox, devastated the native populations. This made it easier for the Spanish to conquer these advanced civilizations. So, the next time you sit down to a meal of bread, meat, and vegetables, remember that the way we grow our food has shaped the course of human history. It's not just about filling our stomachs. It's about the rise and fall of empires, the spread of diseases, and the development of complex societies. The simple act of planting a seed or raising a cow has had far-reaching consequences that are still affecting us today. Who knew that farming could be so powerful?